like I, I call it like my phone has to be leashed at night and in the morning. What I mean by that is like it has to be plugged in in a, in a cabinet. What's up, guys? Welcome to another 5-Minute Fatherhood. So one of the things that we've heard from a lot of you guys about during this season is that because of all the new cycles and all the emotions people are feeling, a lot of people are just spending a lot more time on their phone, looking at news sites, looking at social media, checking in on things. And what can subtly happen um, while you're doing that, maybe for really good reasons, and this happens to me all the time, you know, I'll be working and just needing to spend a lot of time on my phone. But after a good three or four days of that, I'm my like almost my body chemistry <laughs> has been altered to like be yeah. totally phone oriented. And I have to figure out how do I break this, this sort of new level of addiction um, over the phone. So I wanted Jeff, you've wrote a whole book about this stuff and you've thought about this a lot. So what are your, what are your thoughts about totally. how, to, how to help I especially mean, during this season? Yeah, it's hard. And I think too, you'll, you'll, you'll have up and down seasons. And the biggest tip I could give too is that you have the, it's less about being perfect and more about getting back to ideal as fast as possible. Does that make sense? I yeah. think a lot of times we shoot for perfect with something like this. And then just the minute we're start, we are on our phone more or whatever, we kind of either feel shame or guilt or just be like, ah, whatever. And I'm back on it again. I've noticed it's really not about that. It's just the quicker that I can stop the loop, you know, and just go back mm. to the ideal, the quicker that then actually those sections last longer and then those compound over a period of time. So I think that's the first tip because uh, I'm even noticing it in the quarantine stuff. Like I feel like I was in a good spot. The quarantine stuff then kind of totally just jostled me out. I'm on more. We're doing something. I'm like, ugh. it's just you start feeling a certain way, like you said. So you have to kind of get quickly back to like a, a set level of boundaries and practices mm -hmm. and you get to make those up. But I think practice those at least try like week long experiments. And then at the end of the week, debrief whether or not you thought that was helpful or successful. Right. So we have a bunch that now are pretty much set in stone, like um, you know, uh, like I, I call it like my phone has to be leashed at night and in the morning. What I mean by that is like, it has to be plugged in, in a, in a cabinet. Like it's just, it's connected. It's not in my pocket. It's not near me. It's not on a side thing. It doesn't come in our bedroom. So I think like having a place for your phone to like put your phone to bed and, and wake your phone up at a certain time is a really helpful practice. Um, and I do that and I, and, and do that outside of the bedroom. So whether it's the kitchen or the office, mine literally goes in a cabinet door. So there's so many layers of friction of like, I have to go in my cabinet. I mean, go in my office, <laughs> go so in the good. cabinet, turn the phone on. You know, mm. um, that's, it's so much more friction than like rolling over and grabbing it. Um, oh, so you turn it so off as that, well? Yes. And turn it off. Cause that's just enough friction where I notice if yeah. I don't turn it off, I go, I, you know what I mean? Like if right. I can check the notifications, but turning on, it's like the, whatever that is, 20 seconds that takes is a yeah. very large, larger really barrier good. than you think. So turning it off and on, um, at night and then the morning is probably the biggest helpful practice you could do to just create enough friction. Another one is I turn mine off one day a week uh, on Sabbath. Some people like I totally get it. if you got emergencies, whatever, you can't do that. Um, because Alyssa has hers on and she's not as connected as I am that like, mm. as I, I know if someone needs something, they'll just call her. Um, what are some other ones? I do think having like um, one moment in the day that it's off. So whether it's mm. you tell yourself at lunch, whether it's a meal time or whatever, just but having like a sacred time where like you can't be reached for an hour, yeah. I think is really helpful. Um, and so I would say that, um, oh man, I can go on and on, but oh, I, I think good. just having writing, writing these down in, in your notes section and then kind of trying for a week and then debriefing it and then solidifying the ones that worked and kind of redoing the ones that didn't, I think is a really helpful practice, but I don't know anything else you would add. No, oh, that's really, really good. And guys, if you haven't had a chance to check out Jeff's book to hell with the hustle, um, it's, it's, there's so many important things like this, especially now in this season where people, if you find yourself with a lot of time and you're trying to steward a lot of time, yeah. you need to reset a lot of things that you've done in your life that might have just sort of gotten you into a frenzied pace. And you're like, ah, I don't know how to do with the silence, the time, the totally. space. Um, yeah, I highly recommend checking out, uh, Jeff's book so you can get that on Amazon or yeah, wherever books are anywhere. Books are at. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out on audible. Yeah, it's great. 